Welcome to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. Today's proof of life is Thursday, December 22, 2022. My name is Alex. I'll be your host for the next 30 minutes consultation as we address a question that comes from r slash career guidance. Now, this is what we do in reality is... We are career consultants, we're professional consultants, and we focus on professional development for young and aspiring professionals. If you or someone you know, an associate, let's say, are trying to move up, are trying to make a change, switch directions, shift in your professional development, in your career, by all means, reach out to us. You can find us on Instagram. That's at Corporate Cowboys with a Z at the end. And uh, there is a Patreon, actually. You can subscribe to that. There are some tiers that provide access to us to ask questions, to pose prompts for an episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. And you can write to us as well. That's P.O. Box 3372, Rancho Cordova, California, 95741. <clears throat> and that'll be relayed to us. We'll be sure to uh, reach back out to you. <clears throat> we just ask that you be clear, that you be uh, thorough, that you, provide a lot, that you provide a lot of detail, a lot of context. But if we're going to be on a one-to-one, rest assured, we'll have questions for you as well in order to be of better service. Today's question necessarily is asking, how do I get a job in an office if I only had restaurant experience? So in the body of this, our OP says, just as the heading says, I worked in a restaurant for five years. I was let go due to me not being able to keep up with the work physically because I had a pretty serious knee surgery that left me with a limp and unable to stand on that leg for four hours at a time. I seen office jobs and front desk jobs on job hunting apps and wondered if I could apply any of my restaurant experience in that job. If anyone had any similar experiences, let me know. Well, this is perfect. This is perfect, I think. This goes into basic resume building. And I myself have found, have been in a position similar to this one. Having to transition from industries. You're transitioning from the food service industry to something more administrative, let's say. Something more executive, let's say. Now, it's a climb. It is a climb. But it's not unreasonably high. I made the transition and I was rather successful. I think what helped me a lot was communication skills, which I gather, if you were a server... Mm, if you were a server or if you uh, were service oriented at the restaurant, I feel a lot of those service skills can be translated, can be analogized to working in a, working in an administrative position. There's, unless you were like a line cook or, or a line chef, And you're working back of house. I think if you're working front of house, you see I'm using food service jargon. If you're working front of house, I believe the transition is easier than if you're working back of house. Because front of house is uh, more public facing. You tend to get more social interaction with customers and the other uh, parts of the restaurant the other areas of the restaurant. If you're in the back of the house, you're doing more of the uh, 
technical work, preparing dishes, plating food, um, uh, running, running the runners, essentially handing the food off to the runners to uh, have it be sent to the tables and whatnot. But that's not to say that those coordinating skills, those skills to coordinate the back of house can't be trans can't be translated into something that could be of value in a different industry. When analyzing your current position and then superimposing it over a position you want, over a prospective position, you have to find some overlap. At times, you have to be creative and create that overlap. <clears throat> if you're good at coordinating teams right on the front of the house, say you're a host or a hostess, right? Even though you're not a server, you're not taking orders, even though you're not actively working with customers at tables, okay, so maybe you're not taking the orders, maybe you're not exercising your memory, but you're still coordinating teams, you're still coordinating uh, you're still coordinating with the servers as you as you set tables and as you organize the floor to have servers then service the tables. <clears throat> so there is a sense of coordination there. Where if you're in the back of the house, that coordinating and um, navigating through complex working environments through many moving parts that could be also translated into what is a fast pace working environment um having to i i know it's it, it can be somewhat difficult trying to analogize what it is that you do in the restaurant industry in the food service industry and then um advocating what you have to do is learn to advocate for yourself advocating that those skills those skills satisfy uh, the buzzwords that you might see on uh, those job on those job listings on in indeed right so if you see a lot of office and front desk positions on indeed sometimes though that they will in their listing use buzzwords, key buzzwords that they're looking for someone to uh, check off when they when they interview for the position, right? And this might be uh, working with uh, many with moving deadlines. This may be a fast paced work environment. This might be working under pressure. And if you can, Write your resume if you can frame your resume in that perspective. So not so much speak directly on what you did at the restaurant, right? But if you frame your job duties and obligations at the restaurant in a manner that sounds more administrative, in a manner that addresses those buzzwords in the job listings on Indeed and LinkedIn, right? If you write your resume in a manner that addresses those buzzwords, right? Like worked with uh, a a uh, worked with a large team with many members and moving parts, and you could also equate the orders coming out, the orders being made and then coming out to be run to the tables as working with many moving deadlines and able to make changes last minute and coordinating and communicating between the team, right? Essentially, you have to highlight different aspects 
of your skills to communicate, different professional skills in a manner that looks attractive to the interviewer, whoever, for whichever job it is you're applying for. It's not, I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's, it's also not very difficult. I think uh, if you're well-read, you probably understood what I'm trying to say, but, but, and I'm not discounting anybody's efforts out there, but if you are not so well-read, right, you may have more trouble, you may have more issues advocating for the position that you want using only the experience that you got at the restaurant. You see, that's why I had to address it, whether you're front of house or back of house. Okay, what if you were a restaurant manager? I think a restaurant manager is even easier. It's even easier to transition from the food service industry to something administrative, something executive, because you are necessarily doing a lot more of those administrative duties as a manager, having to manage people, work with people on top of operate the business, the business of the restaurant, which is keeping accounts, keeping inventory, uh, ordering and, and receiving that sort of thing. So there is an, there is an extra degree of, of administrative accountability that managers undertake that might be able to transfer a little easier from food service to the administrative sector. Honestly, my recommendation would be if I had, you know, if I had this uh, client in front of me, I'd probably save them some money. I mean, really, I would only keep them at the 30 minute consultation. And if you want something more personalized, uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to us. But, but if they don't need any specific help, any detailed help for, uh, for moving up or for making particular career decisions, uh, I would just refer them to a professional resume writer and we could do that for you as well. Again, you can visit us on Instagram. That's at Corporate Cowboys with a Z. Or you can DM, you can DM us or you can write to us. That's P.O. Box 3372, Rancho Cordova, California, 95741. By all means, you can email us too. The email is available. I think this person doesn't have as big an issue as they think they might. I get that they're in the process of making this transition and this transition is it is it is a significant change leaving one industry for another. But it doesn't mean what you've learned or what you've done in one industry can't translate to another. It doesn't mean that at all. You could absolutely use the skills that made you successful in one industry you might need to retool them. You might need to retrain yourself, but that could be done on your own time. You just have to identify, you have to first analyze and identify those skills that will make you successful in the new industry that you're trying to break into. Again, I would refer them to a resume writer and really always I, I would recommend my clients to upgrade their communication skills, to really up their communication skills, really practice, really hone them. uh, And in that way, be able to communicate effectively what it is they did in the restaurant industry and why hiring them would be the right decision. I mean, interviewers want to see it. Interviewers love to see it. You could be lacking in 
certain other areas. But if you're not a good communicator, it shows. If you're not a good communicator willing to learn, it shows. Let's take a look at some of these comments here, and uh, I'll give I'll give just a brief commentary on them. The first comment says, "You probably have great customer service, and that easily converts to excellent phone skills for office work." Yeah, I tend to agree. If you have great customer service skills, service is service, whether it's in person or over the phone. Again, you may need a little. Uh, retooling or retraining to provide effective, to provide that that cogent customer service over the phone because it is somewhat different, right? Uh, if you're doing sales or if you're doing customer service, if you're doing uh, um, account management, they have a saying. If you're if you're in a call center, they have a saying that says "smile before you dial" or "smile when you dial." Smiles and dials. Apparently, if you smile over the phone, folks on the receiver can hear that in your tone of voice. And so it puts them at ease and it makes the interaction that much smoother. You definitely want to take that into account because it may be something you have to address in order to communicate effectively that you can provide this excellent service that you were that that you're bringing from the food industry into the administrative but it can be done uh somebody else comments here you could start off as a receptionist taking phone calls and greeting clients as a first of contact mention that you have many years customer service including phone reservations etc yes yes Another mention of the phone, and I tend to agree. Uh, most, I'm going to say a lot of interactions take place over the phone in today's day and age. So it only makes sense that you know how to give that customer service both in person and over the phone. I think for a lot of administrative jobs, especially if... Um, if you're going to be interacting with the public a lot, being able to effectively either initiate calls or close accounts, like close a sale on a call uh, on the phone is very important, especially for companies that do a lot of repeat business or do a lot of business to business business if that makes sense. So you could either be selling from business to the consumer, that's B2C, or if you're selling business to business, that's B2B. Those live off of um, cold calls and repeat business. So being able to be effective, but also be consistent will give you long-term success having moved from the food industry to the administrative side of things. This next comment says, you could also try to find a position in a company that operates restaurants. You know how the business works or a supplier for restaurants. For example, as an account manager, you know how operations run. I would not hide the fact that you can't physically do the old job, but you could say this is a good opportunity to switch sides. I agree with this, except, and and again, I brought that up as uh, if you're a manager, if you're a restaurant manager, then you likely saw both sides, both the service and the operations side of food service, right? Um, But if you are either front of house I don't know, entry level or back of house entry level. If you're just either a server, a bus boy, or like a, a, just a cook, just a line cook, those skills are going to be a little harder to parse out and then uh, promote uh, in a way that you can hustle those skills 
in an administrative lens, through an administrative lens, if that makes sense. Otherwise, what are you going to, I guess I could give an example of, of how to do it poorly. If all you did at the restaurant was run plates for five years, right? If you're just a food runner or a bus boy for five years at the restaurant, having to translate that to an office job, it's going to be more difficult than if you had management experience at the restaurant already, right? Because at the restaurant, you would be largely service oriented. No, not even service service oriented because you wouldn't necessarily be public facing. You're only running plates or wiping tables, clearing tables. So it would be more uh, manual, more technical based. And only as it pertains to food service. So having to translate that skill, those skills of what? Running plates or uh, putting in last minute changes or clearing tables. You could say that organization is a skill that you're bringing to the administrative office. Coachability and uh, coordination and communication with the other moving parts of the restaurant if they need their food ran or if they need their tables cleared, right? So it's just going to be a matter of how you approach the interview and how you can spin what it is you did at the restaurant and how what you did at the restaurant will help you in the new job. And uh, yeah, I mean, you could work for a restaurant management company or a supplier, a restaurant supplier, I don't see why that wouldn't work, but you would have to have some kind of base knowledge of how a restaurant operates, which I think comes to some folks easier than some, but in general, people in positions of management, right? People in manager positions, supervisory positions have a better grasp of how a restaurant runs, how a restaurant operates. And those administrative parts of the restaurant, where if you had to take them to a restaurant supply company, again, it might be a little easier having that background knowledge on what equipment restaurants use, what supplies restaurants need. But it's going to come back to having those communication skills. If you can communicate effectively between people, not just your old manager and your new manager, but communicating both outward to the public and inward, upward, through the chain of command. It's going to make you an effective team player in any position they put you in. But like I mentioned before, having to spin what you did before, having to spin what you did in a previous position into how it will help in your future position is one of the most important aspects of interviewing to leave an industry for something new. One or two more comments, and then we'll close it here. Somebody else says, uh, this next comment says, use the skills from working in a restaurant to your advantage. Yeah. Uh, Teamwork skills, time management skills, customer service skills are all needed in a business environment and restaurant environment. Yes. So that would be that overlap that we're looking for. The overlap being that the teamwork, the time management, and the customer service skills are are very much relevant relevant are very much relevant in any work position that deals with business be it the restaurant business be it the, the administrative side of business and then uh, ooh there's a longer one here this longer comment I'll go ahead and run through just real quick it says what are your long term career goals I understand the value you see in an office job, quote unquote, but what 
are you eventually looking to do? Like others have said, you could get a job doing receptionist slash executive assistant or work in a call center doing sales or tech support. But what path are you looking to go down? Those are very good questions. Those are great questions to be answering. The only reason I'm not asking those is because I don't have the client in front of me. And what they want to do is just shift or transition industries, transition from one industry to another. I'm letting them know in general what skills are transferable and the best approach to go about it. I think, I believe, my approach is easily transferable to most any industry change, to most any change of industry. And my recommendation still stands would be to take your resume now with your experience to a professional resume writer or read a little bit online. I mean, you have the power of the internet in your hands. Research a little bit what it takes to re, uh, re, reconfigure, reorganize a resume and how to best present it for positions, for applications in a new industry. So a lot of those, a lot of that is going to require you to know what path you want to go down and what companies it is that you're applying for and for what position exactly. They continue. However, to specifically answer your question, I work in tech and one of the biggest skill gaps is in communication slash people skills. There you go, folks. What have I been saying? What is this entire podcast about? What is this episode and every episode before this one been about? It's communication. You need to learn how to work with people, how to work between people, how to hustle, how to communicate. They say anyone can sit in front of a computer and learn technical skills or skills specific to the company you work for, but someone who can actually eloquently communicate their ideas and is a quote unquote people person is insanely important, insanely important. They write. (laughs) So my actual advice for looking for a job would be on your resume and especially interviews really emphasize those skills and make sure you sound self-aware about it. If you have good communication skills and say you understand the importance of communication in XYZ role, they will take note. Yeah, I agree. If you could at least, if you have some idea, right? If you have those buzzwords in mind that are required for this new position, then you have some idea of what the position requires. Now, it's going to be up to you in your style of interviewing, how you thread or lace in those buzzwords or keywords related to those buzzwords that put you in a position that sets you apart from other interviewers as someone who knows what the fuck they are talking about. And that all comes from communication skills. They continue writing here, I recently got an amazing job and even though I work in tech and have some specific technical skills, the only difference between me and other applicants and the reason I got the job was because both in the interviews and by talking about projects I've done, I demonstrated that I had really strong communication skills. Yeah, I yeah, I just said that and that's a great summary. In fact, they say, I was sorely lacking in almost every technical area they were looking for, but I came across as honest, able to think critically, and communicate well, and that was what they were looking for. Well, folks, you heard it here. I personally don't know if I've found myself in a position where I lacked technical skill but got hired. Um... Actually, actually, no, no, no. I did lack technical skill at one point and got hired because of my social skills, because of my personality. So one of my first jobs I worked for, uh, let's say, yeah, it was, it was an In-N-Out company, In-N-Out Burger Corporation out in California. 
and we were opening a new store. So they were holding like large group interviews and hiring on the spot. Right now, I'd never, it was my first job. So I'd never worked in a burger joint before, but I went in, I, I interviewed and I smiled. I came off as happy go lucky, willing to be trained, willing to learn, hungry to learn. And obviously I was trying to make money. So that's just an extra incentive. Well, when they hired us on and we were going through the orientation, I got to hand it to in and out. I have to give them kudos. I have to give them props for how they trained us during orientation. They really took it to heart that this was our first job and that we were the first crew to be opening up the restaurant. So they trained us in everything and taught us everything from top to bottom about how the restaurant runs, how the restaurant operates. That being said, at a certain key point in the orientation process, they told us that they hire smiles. Essentially, they hire on personality and they train you on the rest. Right? So if you have good communication skills, if you have superb communication skills, that is such a large component of your professional image. Some employers are willing to overlook deficits in technical skill, like this commenter is saying. They'll overlook it because they know that you can think critically, you are sociable enough to be coachable, to be coached, to be taught what it is you need to know for the job. And if nothing else, you communicate well, which in, a, uh, in an administrative environment, in an executive environment, what they need are, are communicators, are nodes in, this, in, this, in their network for communication. People who can think on the fly and communicate what they are thinking. Now, I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. Again, if you like what you hear, if you like what you've heard, want to listen to more, follow us. Subscribe on Patreon. Share the corporate love with your associates, your family if you want to, your friends, those you hold close to. I'm going to wish you a great holiday, potentially a new year. I'm not really going to go anywhere. But if this is the one and only episode you listen to, I'm going to ask why. Have I helped you? Have you learned anything? Have you learned what to do or what not to do from this episode, from this podcast? But hey, it's my project, right? And while I'm doing it, it'll be nonprofit. But if you want something personalized, yeah, you'll have to hit us up directly. We'll be more than happy to help. Have ourselves a great week. Take care.